You know, generally speaking, Twitter feuds aren't, they're not good feuds anymore. Uh, most of them is just people peeing on each other. But in this case, uh, this one is worth a mention because it highlights a larger problem. I'm talking, of course, about Rob Liefeld and Vita Ayala. And I have no idea if I'm, um, I'm saying that name right, but I'm giving it my best shot. Hey everybody, this is Perch. Um, what did Rob Liefeld do this time? Well, <laughs> and the, you know, um, I, where do you even begin with this? So, I mean, at the basics, here's what happened. Um, Newsarama, which is not Newsarama anymore, but like some bastardized game site, um, it posts an article uh, highlighting that New Mutants is getting a new writer post Ten of Swords. In this case, the new writer is Avita Ayala, who is uh, coming on replacing... Um, Brisson, and for a little bit of time, Hickman. So before we get into the, the Liefeld Ayala, you know, spat um, on Twitter, uh, which is really kind of one sided, but not at the same time, it, it represents everything that just makes me sick about Twitter. For a moment, let's talk about New Mutants. So um, New Mutants was relaunched as Dawn of X, uh, Rod Race doing the art, and it was said to be uh, Brisson and Hickman kind of as a joint writing team, but then it was said that Hickman would only be writing kind of the first arc and then it would be Brisson. And, um, it is, uh, Hickman's story. I liked quite a bit. Uh, Rod Rice did that. And it is, um, it, it was basically carrying up on some, um, storylines that Hickman had done in the Avengers, namely Cannonball and Sunspot, going back to, um, you know, meet the Star Jammers, and uh, Cannonball has a baby, and Sunspot's got to bring it back, and it featured kind of mostly the original mutants. I, I liked the title, I liked it, it was quirky, it was fun, and it sucked in how they rolled it out. So what they did was, they had a couple issues of that, and then they said they went over to a different artist, different story, where uh, some of the newer, sort of-ish, new mutants... And it's, it's a case where Boom Boom's, uh, they, oh, look, she's drunk in a flake uh, joke has kind of run its course. But they were fighting some hillbilly anti-mutant people. And it was just, that was a train wreck of a, of a plot. And then it would bounce back and like, here's another issue of Hickman's thing. And then it would go back to like the hillbillies. And it was just, it was all over the place. And it was like, pick a lane comic. Just just tell one story and then go to the next. But this this bouncing back and forth actually highlighted, in my mind, a lot of the problems that Dawn of X has had, where, you know, despite all the talk of being highly coordinated, this this thing just was a cluster in, in how, it was, how it was rolled out for me. But I did like Hickman's story, and then Hickman left. Uh, I generally like Brisson, but um, I didn't like his, his New Mutants was was not great. It, it just, it seemed, uh, it just, it, it didn't have any kind of point to it. You could easily not read that comic. They, you know, now I say these things and the, the Dawn of X fans who are becoming as annoying easily as the Poison Ivy stands, they, they are becoming a kind of weirdly militant goofballs. Um, it's a kind of like it's on social media. They're the people who would be running in um, to just basically spam you with pictures of K-pop dancers. That's that's really what the X-Men fandom has become in a lot of cases <laughs> on social media. Uh, but be that as it may. Um, that title just, it, it, it was aimless. So uh, basically, Vita Ayala, who um, had been given this Children of the Atom book, which got heavily panned from its initial art. Now, my feeling at the time, and still remains, I suspect that title will be better than people think. But the way it was rolled out, which was right about the same time as that New Warriors book that was also heavily panned as just goofball team, it, it didn't look good. It was like, hey, look, it's some you know new people, but they're dressed up like the X-Men. They got similar powers. And why are we doing this again? Like Krakoa has like 10,000 mutants on it now at this point, just having a big jungle orgy all the time. And like it, it just like what is going on it, it from a. Forget the writer or all the rest. It just felt like kind of this aimless, where does this book fall into anything kind of world. Uh, the X titles, of course, I, I think have been kind of spiraling a little bit. And I say that, I, I should use a different word. I don't mean spiraling generally means down, like negative. But they've been kind of just in a holding pattern to a large extent. And if you like that holding pattern, I guess good for you. The sales are indicating 
that that holding pattern isn't isn't uh, is is not it, it has cooled significantly from where House of X Powers of Ten left it last year. But you know, there's still plenty of fans and some people like it. Great. Um, we're heading into Ten of Swords. That event seems bloated to me. Uh, this was my kind of wake up call. The X Men fandom had turned goofy. Uh, was when it's like, hey, you know, twenty six event books, Jesus. And uh, people just ran in from every direction, like, it's not as bad as other crossovers, which is a terrible argument. It's like, hey, you know, this uh, getting shot in the arm is not nearly as bad as getting shot in the chest twice. It's like, I mean, sure, sure. At any rate, so uh, they announced that Vita Ayala, who still has the uh, Children of the Atom book coming out, is the new writer of New Mutants. Now. Here's where Rob Liefeld comes in. Rob Liefeld, who I, I think has had, an, uh, to some extent, an unnatural need to claim credit for anything New Mutants or New Mutants related. He, he always like, I was the one who did the best on that title. And so it, he's done this many, many times before. And to, to be clear, and I think this is the thing that a lot of, you know, well, let me finish telling the story. So anyway, he runs in, he says, he, he, he basically retweets a Newsarama article and says, no, I am not coming back to rescue twice in one. I'm not coming back to the rescue twice in one lifetime. And my strong belief is he's keying off of New Mutants. He's not keying off of uh, Vita Ayala or any of that stuff. He's mainly kind of responding um, in many ways accurately to the fact that the Dawn of X stuff has seemed to have jumped the shark and then turned around and shot it and then ate it and then maybe vomited it back out again. It's It's like... There, there is a, a definite feeling like things are astray. And so I don't think any of his comments, I, I'd be, I would be unsurprised if Rob Liefeld even knew who Vidal was. And I don't, I don't think he cares, but just my, my feeling, I may be wrong about that, but I, I don't think there's any bad will there. I don't say it to defend Rob Liefeld because it was a dick statement. Make no mistake about it. I mean, it was a dick, dick kind of statement, but it was also on brand for Rob Liefeld. I mean, it, it's not, none of this stuff is, is shocking to anyone who's been paying attention to the times he, I don't know, has gotten in fights with Bob Harris or Scott Snyder or the entire Marvel group or when he threatened to sue Bob Iger. Or, I mean, you can just go down the list. Now, um, the response to this uh, was, uh, you know, one of those internet things, mixed. Half the people were like posting the gif of the guy. It was like, oh, burn, you know. And then the other half were outraged. I say outraged. That Rob Liefeld, who can't even draw feet, would make fun of uh, such an amazing, perfect, absolutely ab excellent writer in Vida Ayala. Um, and so the, the posts kind of roll in. And what was particularly, I don't know if gross is the right word, but um, like eye rolling about it, are the amount of creators that came in to talk about Awesome writer and all around cool person, Vita Ayala, was just made writer of New Mutants and Liefeld to be a petty douche about it and insists that he wasn't coming back to save the book this time, implying Ayala will ruin the book or something. I hate him so much. And then, um, you know, and, and then lots of lots of the, you know, the, the usual suspects uh, all coming in to praise Vita Ayala of being the, the most amazing, the kindest, coolest, most ton of talent, perfect Book after book, impressed, can do no wrong, absolutely incredible, uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay. So, um, you know, I, I love the uh, the absolute gall of Liefeld to think he's even a fraction as good a writer as Vita. Um, I mean, sure. Uh, it, it, whatever, whatever floats your boat. Um, here's the thing about all this. Number one, um, Rob Liefeld, like him or hate him. Um, and, and again, please, it, for those who are like, oh, they've already like, ah, oh, you're taking Rob Liefeld's side. Rob Liefeld's clearly a dick here. Well, I mean, no, nobody's denying that. However, uh, for many uh, store owners, I can say, at least retailers, Rob Liefeld paid the rent with the New Mutants and X-Force book uh, for, for many a month. So I, I will say I am not the biggest Rob Liefeld fan. I was never a huge fan of his art. Um, I think his stories are simplistic, uh, of the image, uh, group. I think he was probably my least favorite of the batch that went over, uh, as a fan, as a reader, but as a store owner, as somebody who likes to make money and likes to keep making money and likes to employ people and keep the lights on and sell comic books, 
uh, I have to I have to say he he made quite a handsome penny back in the day, and so I owe him quite a lot for being able to pay the rent, pay employees, uh, keep comics strong. And you can't take that away from him. In 2020, you can't. Oh yeah, he's a nobody. I mean, you know, I, I mean if you're if you're an idiot, if you have no respect for comics that came before you, if you believe that the entire world of comics started five years ago and you don't care what happened before that, I mean, that can be your opinion, but it doesn't change the fact that Rob Liefeld paid the bills. End of story. And nobody, literally nobody, today in writing comics or at any point in the last several years can say that. Rob Liefeld had a run, as did Todd McFarlane, as did Jim Lee, uh, where they were untouchable in terms of they were bringing bank into comic shops. Cash. Now, I get your personal opinion is your personal opinion. I told you mine. I'm not the biggest fan of his art or his stories. I, I just, I never was that impressed by it as a fan. But we, this is a business. This isn't just happy fan time adventure land. This is a business where you're supposed to make money. And he made money. Uh, the current, you know, top writers, you can take whoever you want. You know, you're, you're, you could take your Scott Snyder, your Tom King, your uh, Jonathan Hickman. You can take any of those. They have not created the wealth consistently month in and month out that Rob Liefeld did. S sorry. I mean, I, I I don't know what to tell you. That's just that's just a fact. So you know what what we you know people can be pissed about that. You can but but at the end of the day, it is what it is. Now the other goofy part of all this is that um, it was the reaction of the other comic creators, particularly kind of a lot of the the oh, the indie creators, the people on the anti comic skate side, whatever, who all in mass in unison began you know wrote love letters to Vida Ayala on Twitter. And I mean, good for you for standing by, you know, your friend. But it is a little disingenuous, the comments of like, how dare somebody punch down on a new up and coming creator? It's like, eh, I don't know, coming from you guys? Um, you know, a few of you have punched down. I'm just saying. Um, it's it's one thing to support your friend. And if you want to just say, I'm a friend of Vida Ayala and, and all is well, cool. But to come in and say, you know, it's wrong for people who are in the industry or veterans of the industry to uh, put down or mock or basically throw shade at up and comers. It's like, uh, you know, many of you <laughs> on a daily basis do that all the time for people you don't like. So, you know, let, let's let's just be fair here. Um, nobody in this situation is free from being a dick. There's there's been plenty of that behavior all around. Now, through all this, Vidal was mainly silent uh, throughout this entire period, other than just kind of some vague tweets uh, the other direction, thanking the friends for, um, you know, standing by, and and good good for good for Vida. Um, but in general, this entire process just came across as the just you know one Rob Liefeld being Rob Liefeld. In 2020, I, I'm not sure if it m matters anymore for people to call out Rob Liefeld. I mean, does it? I, I, I don't know. I mean, sure, I, I guess. I mean, he's not going to pay any attention. So, you know, uh, have at it. But in general, um, you know, I, I think that if, if we're going to make a case that, hey, over the last, you know, 12 years, 15 years, whatever, Rob Liefeld seems to have a strong ego and can act like an ass. I mean, sure. Check. At the same time, um, he has a, a history that can't be denied. It is what it is. And I can tell you that any of the people who were defending Vita or Vita, uh, their self or whoever in comics, uh, wishes they had the drawing power Rob Liefeld had back in, say, 92. That, that, that would be, that, that's, that, that's a fact. Um, I, I think, uh, and, and I'll conclude with this. Um, I was, chatting with somebody about kind of this topic and they were saying, well, that's the difference between the nineties and today is back in the nineties. Um, it was, you know, people were more materialistic and cared about the money. And today people are more worried about the art. And I mean, okay. I think you can have both. 
And I think that maybe part of the problem here is that creators and people in general are not focused enough on the money. The money is, is kind of a dirty word or the money is something that, that is to be ignored or to be walked away from. And the reality is um, the money is what keeps people employed and what keeps comics getting made. And I mean, if we all kind of I mean, I, I to me, I think that's the big problem we have in comics right now is too many people are treating it like, a, well, if I'm poor, I'm poor. I don't really care. And, and who these comics shouldn't be selling anyway. I mean, they're just dumb comics. I, I, I'll never forget um, talking to some some indie guys uh, about two, three years ago at San Diego Comic-Con. And it's like, they're just dumb comics. It, it, the contempt for the actual comics came out in the conversation. I'm like, why in the world would you want to devote your life to working in something you think is dumb? And it's like, no, I, it's, and, and, and it's like, I, I don't think it's dumb. I just understand its proper place. It's like, I don't even know what you're saying right now. It, you, you should hope to make money. You should hope to have a bestseller. Now, will the Vidiella New Mutants sell huge? I doubt it. I don't necessarily think that's Vita's problem. I mean, the, the, the challenge is, I think that if Jonathan Hickman came back and started writing the title, I, I'd be a little skeptical of it selling huge at this point. And he's the showrunner for this whole Dawn of X thing. Uh, I think that, you know, some new tricks are going to have to come out of the bag. Uh, I've read Vita's work. I, I, there's nothing wrong with it. I've liked some books. I haven't liked others. Um, I will say, Vita, and and I think, I would hope, uh, Vita herself would say that, you know, it, it it's not a surefire, you know, put, put Vita's name on it, and it's not going to sell, you know, it's not guaranteed to sell 200,000 copies. <laughs> I, just put, I, think, I think everybody is self-aware enough to say that. And I think the question more people should have, rather than maybe feuding with Rob Liefeld on Twitter, or, you know, everybody jumping to the defense is to say, hey, I mean, a lot of us are over here giving full-throated defense of what an amazing, perfect, absolutely talented, amazing, great writer uh, Vita is. How do we get that to translate to people buying the comic? Because otherwise, like anything, it's a lot of this, this writer's amazing and and what? I mean... You know, it'd be really amazing. Vita getting a giant check from all the comics that are being sold. That would be super amazing. I think that would be even more welcome and, and nice. I don't know. There you go. There's a little feud in a nutshell, but you could you could almost replace the names and get a lot of people in here. I, I mean, again, please don't mistake. Uh, maybe you like Liefeld. Maybe you don't like Liefeld. How you feel as a fan is a very different story from the drawing power of the people involved. Now, I don't think Marvel's calling uh, Liefeld anytime soon to come and save the comics. And I, I'll, I'll, I'll throw this out there too. I think they did call Liefeld in to save the comics. I don't think he could save the comics because the Liefeld of 2020 is not the Liefeld drawing power of 92. That's, that's another thing that's changed. But, I mean, it all goes back to, hey, you know what would be great is a comic industry that was selling comics like 92. That, that would be terrific. Let's let's work on that. Anyway, what do you think about all this? Leave a comment below. Like, subscribe, click the bell for notifications, send me a comment, follow me on social media. I, Vita has me blocked. Yeah, I think it's because of the pronouns. I, I don't know. Uh, or or I was caught in a blockchain. Probably that second one. Uh, I'm trying my best, though. I, I honestly, I, I, I'm trying my best. Not good enough. Not good enough some days, but tomorrow's another day. Thanks for listening.